Now that your doorbell camera is installed, you'll need to install the Hike Connect app on your cell phone for easy access, configuration, and to receive alerts and notifications. For iOS devices, you can go to the iOS App Store. For Android or iOS, you can also just scan the QR code on the side of the box the device came in to get the app even more easily. In my case, I'm using an Android device. I'll click on Go to Download to download, then click on Install. This will download the installer package or APK file to your phone. The download should just take a minute or two. Once the download completes, depending on your device, you might get an install pop-up or you may need to go to your downloads and select the file. Then choose the package installer. You might get a security notification, so choose settings followed by allow for this source, the source being the Hike Vision App Store. Back arrow and then click install. Once the installation is complete, choose open. You'll be asked to allow certain permissions, then select your country or region from the extensive list. Once you find the correct location, click the check mark in the upper right hand corner. The app will launch and you'll be able to log in or register a new account. As of the making of this video, the current version of Hike Connect is version 3.13.0. You'll be able to set up auto updates later on. I'll log in with my credentials and I'm asked if I want to turn on fingerprint authentication as it makes access so much easier. I'll click on settings, then I'll be asked to verify my fingerprint and if it matches those already stored in my device, fingerprint authentication will automatically be enabled. You can always change this in other settings at any time. Now we're ready to add our doorbell camera to our system. All of the instructions for adding the Hike Connect app and adding the doorbell camera to your account are covered in the doorbell's quick start guide. You'll want to have the QSG handy during the next step as you will want to scan the QR code located on the cover of the QSG. Each QR code is unique to the device in the box as it will be creating a temporary Wi-Fi connection directly between your phone and the doorbell. So it can tell the doorbell the Wi-Fi network that you want it to operate on. You will need to be close to the doorbell and within the range of the Wi-Fi network while doing these steps. Before you start the Add Device Wizard, there's one additional step that you need to complete. This step might not be listed in your Quick Start Guide. It only applies to Android devices like the one I'm using now. It does not apply to iOS devices. So before you click on Add Device, simply place your phone in airplane mode. Once airplane mode is active, manually enable Wi-Fi, as I'm showing you now. Allow the phone to connect to your local internet connection. If this isn't done, the Android OS will attempt to use mobile data to connect to the internet while you're trying to talk directly to the doorbell. This will make it impossible to temporarily communicate directly to your new doorbell during the Add Device process. Now when you click on Add Device, you'll be able to follow the wizard as I'm going to show you in the following steps. Once the device is added and linked to your Hike Connect account and you see the added complete message on the screen, you can turn airplane mode back off. I'll click on Add Device. The app will request permission to access the phone's camera to scan the QR code located on the QSG. Note there is a second copy of the QR code located under the doorbell's faceplate on the doorbell button. Click Allow and Allow again and scan the QR code. Your device model number is displayed on the screen along with its serial number. If the blue LEDs around the doorbell button are not flashing quickly, press and hold the reset button and follow the voice prompts before clicking next. Now click next. With your phone near the doorbell and within range of your Wi-Fi network, click OK. The SSID of the Wi-Fi network your phone is connected to will be displayed and you'll be prompted to enter the network password. Type in the Wi-Fi network password and then click next. Remember, at this point, your phone is communicating directly to the doorbell using the doorbell's own default Wi-Fi network, 
that was configured into your phone when you scanned the QR code. It's now providing the doorbell, your Wi-Fi network configuration, and authentication information. Once the information is transmitted, your phone will automatically disconnect from the doorbell and reconnect to your Wi-Fi. You may see a network disconnect message on screen. That's normal. Then you will see the doorbell negotiating with your Wi-Fi, connecting to it, and then linking itself to your Height Connect account. Be patient, this could take a minute. Once that is accomplished, you get an added complete notification. Click Next to begin initial configuration of your doorbell. First, give your device a unique name. Then click Save. Next, depending on any local laws, you can choose whether or not to record audio. Now you have to tell the doorbell the type of chime it is connected to. This is important for proper chime operation. As you saw in the previous video, we are using a mechanical chime. Once I select this, a reminder is displayed regarding the power kit that we already installed. Click Next. Now you can program the active zones for the built-in PIR to trigger alarms. The ranges are not exact, but they're a good indication and will vary a bit depending on your location. You'll be able to easily reconfigure them at any time. Simply click on the different areas to turn them on, blue, or off, gray. Android apps may need to be unoptimized to prevent them from sleeping and delaying alerts and notifications. You can tap on the video inset to enter the live view page. The app supports both portrait and landscape modes. To go full screen, hit the expand icon. To revert back, tap on the collapse icon. Notice the Ultra HD icon in the lower left hand side. Here you can change the resolution of the camera from Ultra HD to HD to standard definition and then back again as you wish. In the upper right hand corner you will see three dots. This will take you to the settings menu. Here you can choose your time zone, whether or not you use daylight savings time, and the date format. You can also choose to receive calls from the doorbell, modify the chime type if necessary, and whether or not the indicator LEDs on the doorbell itself are on or off. In the alarm notification section, you can choose to enable notifications, and once you do, you'll be able to set up a schedule, silence the notifications, set the notification sound, and reconfigure the detection area settings for the PIR. We'll go back to the settings menu and scroll down to the storage status. This is where we can initialize or check the status of our SD card. Notice mine is already initialized and shows a status of normal. If I had not already initialized it, the status would say initialize. If I were to reinitialize the card now, all files would be deleted. So I'm not going to do that. We'll jump back to the main settings menu and look at the last item, which is our IR light, which we can turn on or off as necessary. 